Uh, yeah, well, uh, I got a text message there from my girlfriend at the time. She was saying, go on to RMI, you've been nominated for an award. And I went on, seen it on there, then you just had it uploaded on your page. Yeah. And did you, did you find out who had put you forward for the award? It was only my girlfriend says, oh, I nominated you when it was up. She never yeah. told me before, so uh, it, was, it was a bit of a surprise. I didn't think, I didn't even really pay much attention to it until she had said that. Yeah. And, and I suppose, you know, you were, work, you, know, you were working around and being a carer at the same time, you know, so how did you really do that? Can you tell us a wee bit about who you were caring for? Yeah, well, I was looking after my dad there. He was sick for, he'd been sick for a few years, really, so he had been, and he was just sort of getting worse. He was getting older, his illness was getting worse, so I was caring for him, sort of, and then trying to balance work. I'd cut down on work, and I was straight to work, straight home again. And with dad, you know, trying to get the house clean, shop, and arrange care, do the care, and nighttime care, and things with him. Yeah. And what, if you don't mind us asking, you, you know, what, what was your father's illness? He had Parkinson's. It was just movement and his balance and things. So he was falling quite a lot and just he had broke his arms and he fractured his neck. He's, he dislocated his shoulder. He, so he needed somebody with him all the time and to walk with him. So he literally could not be really left on his own or he was going to cause more damage and he wasn't even fit to do any movement then. And was it just yourself or, or was there other members of the family that were able to step up or were you the only one that was really available to do that? Yeah, well everybody, all of us were trying to work so it was sort of trying to balance it. All the family had done their bit but they could only do so much, you know, so uh, I took the choice of cutting down and work so everybody wouldn't have to cut down because a lot of employers wouldn't take it. Thankfully, my employer was very, very understanding on it and they did let us, you know, you know, I cut down to two weeks on, two weeks off and then I went to set days. Uh, to do on a Monday and a Tuesday just, so not too many employers would work with you to do that, so thankfully they did. If Parkinson's it can affect their sleep and things, so you're up all night and then when you're trying to go to work, you're shattered going to work and coming home, getting other things done, sort of trying to balance everything out. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's more than 40 hours a week anyway. Yeah. <laughs> the cares that we had in, uh, helping along with us, they were brilliant now, uh, and built a relationship with them, and you know, if they had a been going on holidays, Dad would have been, how can I miss X, Y, or Z? You know, I miss that care. I haven't seen them in a few weeks. And come back, he was he was happy to see them. You know, you get sick of looking at my face all the time, so he would, you know, 24 hours a day. You know, so he was glad to see the other ones coming in and be able to, some of them would have helped take him out. You know, he wouldn't need a lot of help, you know, going out. So getting them into the car and stuff, he'd need two people and even just driving about and things. Yeah. So he was so glad to have them. And I suppose being a carer as well, it probably was important for you to have that time with your father, obviously not knowing how long you would have oh, yeah. uh, as well. Yeah, no, it was, as I said, it was priceless the time, you know, it's, I got to know dad more probably over the probably four or five years that I was caring for him when I did, you know, the 25 years before that, because, you know, I was so close to him at that point, because it was just always one-on-one -on -one with him, always doing everything, we're going everywhere. So I did, I got to know Dad a lot better and get closer to him through that time, which was nice. It was, say, December last year, the start of December last year then, he had passed away. It was sort of quite of a shock. Nearly any death is even if you're sort of expecting it, it always is a shock. But, yeah, so it was a big change of culture to him for, for literally working during the pandemic. Then when we are all on furlough, I took on paid leave with work. I actually look after Dad at the point for six months off. And thankfully the company gave me the six months off and then it only started on the 1st of December, not the day Dad died. So it was a big, big change for me, literally from December with no work, obviously taking on paid leave and then not having Dad to look after. So from doing all that to doing nothing was, yeah. it was uh, you're difficult. You're probably <coughs> twiddling your thumbs, lost, lost with something to do, especially when you put, you know, put so much time in, into looking after your father. And that, as I said, we were saying before, that's almost like a full-time job. Yeah. You, know, you must have felt very lost. Yeah, especially coming up to Christmas too. It's, it's that time of year you always usually are with family and things, and then with the lockdown and everything happening, not everybody was going out. So literally it was completely just, I really didn't know what to do with myself. No, my dad actually wasn't, uh, hadn't long passed when I won the award, but uh, it, you know, so it was, uh, it was nice, it was nice to win it because like, when anyone dies, you sort of, as well as the grief, you always have that sort of, you know, you have a guilt as well, which everybody, you know, everybody has it. 
you know, they just, just sort of think, oh, I should have done more, I should have done this. You know, you always do think, I should have done more, I could have done more. So whenever I won the award, it was, it was nice. Nobody, nobody does care and <laughs> for any merit or to get an award. It's, it's not worth it. You know, that way, you got to get that way. But it was nice because it's sort of that guilt that you, I was feeling, it sort of reassured me that it did do everything I could for Dad. So it was nice to win it, you know. Yeah. Again, not that I was doing it for an award. <laughs> Well, I, I think it's, it's as you said, it's, it's a thankless task sometimes. Yeah. And I think probably you know that someone is getting, you know, shouted out about. You know, yeah. it's probably every carer deserves to be shouted about. Yeah. About, but you know, I suppose someone that can now, as someone in their family, they should really think about it because it can make a big difference. Oh yeah, and even the other lady that was nominated for the carer of the year last year as well, I'd, I would, I would know of, of her anyway. She lives close to us, and as I say, she does a wonderful job with. Her curing role as well, she's brilliant, you know, and any care that does care, and like, it's, you know, the all of them deserve an award, really, because there's it, it, a lot of work in it, it's worth every minute of it, but there's a lot of work in it.